This time on Hazelnuts. Can a Land Rover be converted to electric in just one day? Yes, you heard that right. We're going to convert or try to convert this Defender to fully electric. Using this complete bolt-in kit in just one day. So, let's go. We may have cheated just a little bit. The engine, transmission, the fuel tank and all the ice components have already been removed from the car and it's been cleaned down a bit so we don't get these hands too dirty. Unless you fall over. I won't fall over. <laughs> right now, Nick, we're going to talk through everything that's on here and explain what all the bits do. Everything. Everything. A whole lot. Cool. A whole lot. So this is a Land Rover chassis, which you can buy nice new ones. A and new one? They're not shipping it with the chassis. But what they've done is they basically built this as a test rig. So they can bolt every single thing to it, every mount, every nut, bolt, cable, and they can basically run the entire system like this before they pack it up and then ship it to, say, the US or anywhere else in the world. So they know when it leaves, it's fully operational. And it actually fits. And it actually fits, that's true. I mean, there's loads of variations in Defenders, as we know, there's like two inch difference in some of the chassis, but you know, they, they get shims. Well, I have noticed there's a lot of um, slotted holes. Yeah, because there's, a, there's for changes. so much variant in the old Defender chassis over the years. So let's talk through everything that's here, shall we? Let's start at the front. You know what this is? Radiator. Hey. We have two radiators. Do you know what this is? That's a battery pack, that is. Do you know what battery pack this is? That is a UBP55E. How would you know that? Because it's from Felton. <laughs> <laughs> and they can also run this with the seat box as well, so it could go from 55 kilowatt hours to 110 kilowatt hours if you want more range. This is a power, power steering, steering pump, pump. Yep, from so a Vauxhall or something? I can't remember. So electric power steering pump runs on 12 volt. There's two radiators, so you've got one for motor and one for battery pack because they run at different temperatures. There's also an AC pump just there as well for air conditioning because obviously some countries are quite hot. And then you've also got brake vacuum there to maintain the original braking system. And then under this bit here is where all the crazy wiring's in. So all your 12 volt circuits, relays, everything is in behind there. And then if you look just around here, they've got some nice connectors in place. So it's all as plug and play as possible. Unless they've got a little Bluetooth dongle as well. And a uh, body charge down Ooh, the yeah. back there, charge a DC DC. Just down there. So that's a 6.6 .6 kilowatt AC, which goes to DC to charge the battery. It's also a 2.5 kilowatt DC DC, which is just like an alternator in a car. Just like the alternator. Because they all still have 12 volt systems, because you've still got to run your headlights, your brakes, all the other stuff, and the contacts in the battery pack also run on 12 volt. And now the uh, exciting bit. Well, there's this. Is that the exciting bit? No, well, that's the exciting bit, but I suppose to most people that are buying a kit or having a car converted, that's actually the main bit you Before look Before you at. jump to excitement, what about this? What, the air conditioning? Yeah, the condenser for the air conditioning. Yep, and that's now in the back because that generates a lot of heat, which you don't want to put into the rest of the radiators. So it's back there now, out the it's way. back there now, out the All way. All the heat comes at the back and the charge port. Yeah, so that's a CCS2 port, 70 kilowatts rapid charging or the AC, also type one for US and other places like that. Um, all done from the guys at Electric Car Converts. And then this is, I suppose the exciting bit, it's a Tesla Model 3 motor, which has a limited slip diff and a reduction gear set. So it then goes out to the original drive shaft, prop shafts. Onto the, onto the front and rear diff. To get the ratios right. Um, and this is more than enough power for a Defender. How they're, much power? They're dangerous enough, is it? I think they're, they're over 200 kilowatt. Um, and to be honest, Defenders don't handle that well. No, they don't. <laughs> and then they've got the nice little bit here with your fan activation, your AC, your parking brake, and your drive neutral reverse selection. Um, and I think we can actually turn this on. So we're going to get Barnaby, who's the CEO. Yeah, he founder, can show us it. And he can show us how it turns on and moves. And magically, Barnaby's appeared. You may have seen him from such shows as Below Deck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in my previous <laughs> life. So to start her up, this is just our fake ignition because obviously we don't have a key. So we'll just give that 12 volt. You hear the whole thing click into life, stick it into drive. There we go. And that's the newer Defender pedal, isn't it? That is a TDCI pedal. So it just bolts straight in. Yep. So even if it's an older model, you can fit yep. those? Yeah, exactly. exactly. That's just sitting in original bolt holes. Cool. Um, and now we have a nice noisy oil pump, because the Tesla's have got an electric oil pump. <laughs> <laughs> but it's that simple. It just it works. It literally is that simple. And so all we're going to do in a minute is connect that wire to the back of the key and it will just turn the system on in the same way. Perfect. I look, it like Sounds easy. Sounds like we literally need half a day. I think we need a couple of hours, yeah. 
But let's see. Right. Should, should we set a timer? Yeah, yeah, we're gonna. It's all ready to go. We'll set a timer and let's get started, shall we? Yep, let's go. This is Toby, and that's only because that's his name. His name's Toby. And before we start the timer, Toby's gonna talk us through the list of actually what we have to achieve today to get this completed. Cool, so basically, uh, this section we don't need to pay attention to because that's stripping everything off the chassis. So if a customer had a kit, they'd start here. Um, main things to start with is gonna be fitting the framework. Um, and then concurrently, you can also be doing stuff inside if you've got multiple people. So inside we've got clocks, uh, stop charge button, connecting ignition lines and fitting the general control box. And then on this side, we've got uh, power steering pipes, uh, fitting the heater, fitting the blanking plate for the accelerator, the, the hole that used to be there, uh, fitting UBP. Uh, then we go HVAC, so that's the AC compressor in the front, that's yep. just below that radiator. Um, fit the cooling pack, we run all the coolant pipes, pre-cut lengths of um, rubber, so it's easy to do from a kit uh, point of view. Then we've got a uh, brake booster and fitting the power of steering pump, making sure that doesn't leak and is all, all connected properly. Um, then we're going to put it on a lift, but you can do it on the floor on a little skate if you want. Um, we're going to fit handbrake calipers. Uh, the motor HV loom goes in just before the motor. Then we're going to fit the Model 3 motor, uh, run the coolant pipes to it, and then we're just going to check all of our systems, put props on, and go around the block. And drive it? Yep. All in what? Two hours. Three hours. Three right. hours. Toby reckons three hours. <laughs> Let's start the timer. Every time I go near something, it disappears. <laughs> Just look busy over here a minute. I flat out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know whereabouts on the list we've got to. Things have just disappeared. <laughs> Framework. No, we're at the top what? bit, obviously. What top bit? <laughs> <laughs> Strip looms. Charge loom. Low voltage loom. Did you what? not listen to anything you were told? <laughs> well, he said Ignore this that bit. <laughs> and you start here. Yeah, well, it says fit framework. <laughs> One of the first things that's going into the car is the charge port. This is a key feature because this allows CCS charging at 70 kilowatts, which means you can go from zero to 80% state of charge in probably around 20 minutes with a 55 kilowatt hour. Going in behind me is the main cross member. And as you can see, it always takes a minor bit of adjustment, no matter how much you plan. Just tap it in, just tap it in. Barnaby, are you above deck now? Who did this? <laughs> what is it? It's from the film Wally. <laughs> so the frame has just been lifted in now that holds the batch pack in the front. And if you look up there, above deck there, is Barnaby. And he's installing all the controls, I believe, into the cabin. The clocks have gone in, the low voltage loom into the cabin. Yeah, I know. I, I'm sure. Thanks, Nick. As you can see, the timer is just over one hour, and they are currently fitting the plates into the vehicle, which is going to take the Model 3 drive unit. After they've finished that, it's going to come down, roll forward, so they can put the UBP 55 into the front of it. It's going pretty quick. 
You can now take a better look at the body charge that we tried to talk to you about earlier that was wedged down the back of the pack. So this is an onboard charger and also the DC to DC. Liquid cooled here, cool in and out. And then you've got your low voltage connection, you've got your high voltage connection, and you've got your charger port connection there for your AC charging. So that's on the back of the pack. So this will spin around, go in the front of the car, and then you'll probably never ever see it again. Oh, here's the Behind me, you can see they're lining up the car. It's easier to move the car because the RSJ doesn't move. So they roll the car under, and then they'll lower the pack down into the car, hopefully without bashing into anything. We'll see. I'm putting in the AC compressor and the back pump for the brake servo because the batch pack is already in. It literally took five minutes. We're at one hour 30 now, so looking pretty good on the time. Toby's just fit in the Rad Pack, which comes as a fully built unit. So he's just going to bolt it in here. And then I'm assuming you'll connect up the rest of the coolant lines to it. Yeah, so we've got um, Hardline Alley for where it's all pre made on the UBP and then on the Rad Pack. And then we provide pre cut lengths of uh, rubber heater tube, which is just crimp A to A, B to B, C to C, D to D. Done. Nice and easy. Yeah. Because down here we've already fitted the AC compressor the vac pump for the brake booster and the power steering pump. So all the ancillaries are going in and then it's back onto the ramp. The Model 3 drive unit's gonna go in from underneath and it sounds quite achievable. There's an hour left of the apparent three hour deadline. So let's see if we can make it. The Defender's back on the ramp they have got the motor underneath. That's gonna go up and out into the frame that's been fitted to the chassis that was bolted in earlier. Also inside the car, the loom has just been poked through here. This is gonna feed the electronic rear parking brake, which has to be fitted because now there's no more brake on the output of the uh, gearbox like there would have been from factory. So they have to have an electronic parking brake. It's all going together. There we go, three hours is up and it's not finished. Maybe it was a bit optimistic. The whole plan was to complete this in a day. So we still have technically like six hours left, but there is a new prediction that it will be done now within four hours, which is still really good going. But Toby wow. with his big mouth saying three hours and it didn't happen. So there we go, four hours now. The motor and all the mechanicals are now in. The handbrake calipers have been mounted. And I believe the only thing now to do is to fill up the coolant and fit the prop shafts. And then there is a little bit of tidy up, but it's technically done by the moment it will drive. The tidy up bit's just to look nice, right? We are at three hours and 27 minutes and it's now time to bring the HV live. Some coolant has gone in, it still needs to be bled through, but there ha is coolant in the system. They're just powering up HV, and we're gonna check everything's all right. The timer, 3.59, and the car is coming down. The prop shafts have been fitted, and it is apparently actually real. They even opened the door like it's gonna just drive out of there. We're gonna see. To be fair, true to their word, it's driven out of it. And if you look at the timer, we've just gone past four hours. So that wasn't as the, oh, it's gone. That wasn't as the car goes down, let's just make up a load of time. It's actually done and it's driving and it's not broken. It's finished and in four hours, but the proof is in the test drive because it's not truly finished unless it actually drives without breaking down. So 
I guess the test drive is on the cards. <laughs> so it's test driving, it's working, everyone seems happy, nothing's fallen off, nothing's broken, <laughs> and uh, great success I would say. So if somebody wants one of these built, yeah. in four hours. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's not always in four hours, let's uh, remember that. But um, no, it's electriccarconverts.com. We will send you a kit if you're not in England, or we will do it, in your, do it on your car itself if you are in England. No, who's that? <laughs> <laughs> Overall, I think we've had a pretty successful day. I mean... No, I washed them. They're not really that dirty. I cleaned so them. <laughs> I would say the guys at Electric Car Converts did most of the work. Yeah, they did. They, they did. knew what they were doing. They did a really good job. Four hours. Four for hours was Complete conversion. Yeah, it was impressive. Absolutely insane. Yeah. Still needs a little bit of tidy up, but realistically, within two days, you could probably get a really good conversion done with their kit. Yeah, it's very, it's very well thought out. It's simple yeah. in a way that there's nothing too tricky to, to do. Like you could do it yourself. It's, yeah. it's, there's nothing that you'd really need. And they will ship those kits all over the world. They also fit them in the UK. They have a fitting company in America as well. So wherever you are in the world, reach out to Electric Car Converts. Because believe it or not, one thing that Barnaby told me that I couldn't believe is that if you're in the UK and you buy one of their kits, they fit it for no, no extra charge. It's crazy. And I think that's a massive selling point. Is, and they're yeah. really competitive on price. So if you want one, reach out to them. Thank you so much for watching. What have the people got to do, Nick? They have to like, they have to subscribe, and you have to come back for more great content with these lovely gentlemen. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.